was a bit overdone. <laughs> this is getting off to a hot start. Let me tell you why I'm here at this point in the agenda. Sort of like damp or anything. That's me. You can't hit. When I found out that Senator Sanders was coming, I was elated. I said to Ed, I don't want to speak. I just want to listen. I just want to be there to participate. He said, no, we're going to throw you on stage. We have to have somebody representing your class. <laughs> I'm sure what he meant by that exactly. I said, you meant local talent. He said, no, I don't think you've reached that level yet. How about <laughs> Did you settle for local color? <laughs> well, I'm here at any rate. And I, I can't believe it is 10 years. When this all started out, I was a younger guy. <laughs> Much younger, I felt younger. I felt a little more optimistic, I gotta tell you. That's the Eastern European side of me. I am Polish, after all. There was never a good day coming. There was just a day, we judge it later. <laughs> Just quit right now. <laughs> at any rate, you are in store. I had the pleasure earlier this evening to uh, be at uh, the home of Bed and Eddie Garvey and, and uh, for the event that they were doing for uh, Senator Bernie Sanders and had an opportunity to listen to him talk about the things that he's observed and he knows and he feels so strongly needs to be changed in this country. So I would really encourage you to. Uh, if, you, if there's any way you can do it, maybe most of you have plans to do it already, but be at the event to listen to you. We've got other, we've got other folks coming up, it's my understanding that uh, you know, are really going to be inspirational as well, so take advantage of that. And here's why, here's my message for you. Because in spite of the fact that, well, Ed has been doing this for 10 years, and the likes of Jim Hightower and Bernie Sanders and others come and they speak and, and they do their part. The real part in this democracy, and we are challenged, is what you do. The, the conversations that you have, the courage that you find within yourself to communicate to the people around you what this country should stand for. And I might add what it has stood for in the past. Someone said to me, you know, not too very long ago that, well, isn't this tough for you to observe this? I said, well, you know, when I think about it, and I think back to my days in school, this country has been through these sorts of things before. And the fact of the matter is we're here at Fighting Bob Fest because a fellow named Bob LaFollette decided to take on the same sorts of challenges that we are feeling today. He and his wife and his family dedicated themselves to making the kind of change that had to be made if America was going to be the sort of America it was intended to be. And yeah. Senator, Senator Sanders is right. It is being stolen from us by the right wing for a very, very, very selfish reason their own greed, and the protection of their own wealth. I spoke the other day, I spoke the other day to a group of people who are working in rural communities in Wisconsin, trying to change the economy, build the economy, focus on new opportunities, create jobs, do things that'll stabilize and sustain our communities, and they were discouraged. They said, you know, Stan, you talk about these things, but there really is no money. There is lots of money in this nation. This is a wealthy nation. There's tremendous wealth in America. The unfortunate thing is it's being controlled by fewer and fewer people. And they've crossed the line, as is always the case. When you take too much, it becomes an addiction. And they now have to have it all. And they're intent on getting it. Now, what stands between them and what this country should be. You do! You do! And it's about time you understood that you have a moral right to your position. This country was never meant 
to be a country to protect the wealth of the rich. It was a country of opportunity. It was a country of education. It was a country that welcomed diversity. We don't have to change away from that. You can make sure that that happens, each of you in your own way, by talking to your friends and to your families and not being afraid to point out the fallacy of what the few and the greedy are doing to America. A friend of mine, well, I, let's not call him a friend, an acquaintance of mine said, Stan, why is it that you rail on those who would have wealth? What's wrong with that? And I said, I'm not opposed to wealth. I think wealth is a wonderful thing. I think I've been blessed, although I don't think necessarily all my wealth is measured in money or stocks that I have in the bank. I'm a wealthy person because of the way I was raised and the opportunities that I've had and the children and the people in my life and where I get to live and the fact that the farm that I was born on, I live on today. What there is something wrong with is unmitigated greed. And it's about time, it's about time that every American realize that this is not a spectator sport. It was never intended to be. Our forefathers, Thomas Jefferson, knew it. That's why he put so much emphasis on education, because you cannot preserve democracy without education. And that is why the people who are so wealthy won't pay taxes, want to undermine our public education system. That is why they want to break the back of our institutions. That is why they want to downsize the universities. That is why they want to control that environment. Now, Bernie Sanders and Ed Garvey and John Nichols or I or anyone else, we cannot do this unless you're engaged and you're involved. And that's what I call you to tonight, to engagement and involvement. Step up to the plate, talk to people, get involved, make a difference, call them out when it's appropriate so that we can make a difference for our children and our grandchildren. And oh, by the way, this is something on a little lighter note. At this same meeting I was speaking to, you know, the question always comes up, well, you talk as if these politicians would listen to us. I said, oh, I was in the legislature. They will listen to you, but they have to first understand that you have the power to take from them what they want most, which is power. So you, you've got to be willing to be engaged. And this is the humorous part of it. And one of them said, yeah, well, a lot of times when they get there, they change. And you can never tell exactly who it is you're electing and what they'll be like. Now I'm going to tell you. You can kind of tell that, okay. When they talk in their speeches about giving tax breaks to people who have already had as much tax break as they can reasonably get or expect, you can pretty much assume that they're not fit for public service. All right? That would be one. When they break the backs, when they break the backs of the institutions that, that create our commonwealth, the protection of the environment, reasonable transportation plans, the union people that work so hard to keep the state functioning, when they speak against them, and those principles and those institutions, they're probably not fit for public service. Uh, if they show up on TV and it doesn't even look like they should be on a golf course, and their shorts fit funny, even though they're meeting with the president, it probably is a pretty clear indication that they're not in touch, and in my opinion, they shouldn't be in public service. So here, here's what I have to say.
say to you tonight, you want to be in public service. You want to be running for political office. Get off your backsides and do it. Step into that stream. You will enjoy it. It is our destiny to be engaged in the political process in every way we can. Have a great time here at Bobfest. Thank you for tolerating this voice from the north one more time.